Welcome, all ye frights and ghouls, to our show this hallowed night. Now let me tell ye of the rules of building monsters right. From deck of severed limbs you choose seven creature parts. Those bits are those which you must use within your monster arts. Sit back and watch us turn our trash to terrifying creation. Welcome to the Monster Bash Beyond Imagination. If you're watching this on Halloween thinking, I have nothing to watch today. Boy, do I have good news for you. So a bunch of amazing creators got together to create a deck of monster part cards that you can pick pieces from to design your own monster. We all randomly picked seven to include in ours. I'm gonna leave the playlist of everyone's videos in the description. So if you wanna have a spooky marathon, check it out. I immediately connected two sets of the cards and I thought it would be really cool to make an outer monster with a inner monster inside of it, kind of like a Trojan horse situation. <laughs> and with that in mind, let's start building. I started with a base using the lid from the Hobbit Hole project, filled the inside of it with cardboard to make it a little bit more solid. I decided that I wanted to get all of the sculpting out of the way in the beginning. In the outer monster, I am including the high heel boots card. I'm constructing them on pieces of popsicle sticks that the inner monster will build off of later. Wrapped the bottom of that with some foil to bulk it out a little bit, and I started sculpting the boots. Trying to get the shape like the card. It's pretty curved on the bottom and it's like very upright, super high heels. To start creating the inner monster, we are of course starting with an armature. I took them off of Chinese takeout boxes. Trying to get the vague form that I want the monster to be in. So the monster is gonna be levitating because of the levitating leg card that I drew, which I also actually drew. So I really wanted the legs to be in that kind of hanging shape and I also wanted the the arms to come into sort of like a sorcerer monster position. I don't know. After I had bent it into the shape that I wanted it to be, I covered that in foil, bulking up some of the areas where I knew there would need to be more mass. Every time I make an armature, I just feel like a failure. They always look like the I thing from Spongebob. It. That's the point though. You gotta tell yourself that, but man is it hard sometimes. <laughs> covered the entire thing with Sculpey as best as I could. Then I start sculpting in details. I decided to go with the idea that this inner monster was kind of pieced together and was missing a couple of limbs that ended up getting traded later on. Oh God, it's starting to look like one of those sock monkeys. That's kind of the reason that it's trying to pilot something that is a little more perfect or neat on the outside, hiding a very messy interior. I wanted the inner monster part to be the interesting part because I think a lot of times the things that are a little bit messy and chaotic are the things that make us interesting. Always gotta have a cheesy message behind a project. <laughs> on the face, I'm also including this card, which I interpreted to be four eyes, one large one and three at the top. Making eyes is one of the things that I love doing most. It's easy to make them look pretty decent. I kind of like this strange two eyelid thing going on here. I don't know if I'm saying that just because I'm lazy and don't want to like fix it. The mouth I made crooked, it'll be stitched together later on, cut out the ears that I originally thought I was going to add, but I ended up using the outside of that cut piece to make the ear. Bob knew what he was talking about. Attach that piece on, trying to blend it in. Thing is, I'm gonna have to match this on the other side, and that is what I'm worried about, because I can do it once by accident, but can I do it to match on purpose? That is the ultimate question. I am thoroughly hoping that nobody came here for a sculpting tutorial. This is not the place. The one thing that I love about this being a monster bash, guess what? If the ear doesn't look like a real ear, it was meant to be that way because it's a monster that I'm creating myself. Added some neck and texture detail and dimension. And I also scored where the leg and arm will be severed. Added a back spine neck piece. This is one of those things, like in every project that I do, that you will not end up seeing later on, started making the hands, which I am taking from this card. My leg and hand card ended up matching pretty well. They both had four extremities and they also had very similar claws. So I started shaping the hands into a cool shape, like I described earlier, this or something, I don't know. I also started shaping the feet, kind of creating that arch and cutting the toes as well. With the inner monster, we are also including this tail card. The beginning of the tail structure is a essentially the same idea as the armature for the Sculpey, starting with a 
plastic circle piece from a soap bottle and built wire off of it. Curved the wire into a shape that I think the tail would look cool in. Put foil over the top of that. That's where I really created the form. I decided that I was going to make the tail out of liquid latex to make it lighter so that it would hopefully stay up off the ground easier. And if it ends up being bad, well, at least it's just the tail. So I'm using a combination of liquid latex and streamers from my mom's birthday. I use cut pieces of a makeup sponge. You can cut them into basically any shape that you need. This whole process is very similar to paper mache. Lay on the liquid latex, lay on the paper, and put on liquid latex over that. It will give the tail a really cool and interesting texture when it builds up too much on here. Fresh sponge. For the middle spine, I used a twist tie, twisted it up, and then laid it along the center going down the tail. Super easy, and I think that it looked pretty cool. For the outside, kind of spiky pieces, punched out half circles of diminishing size from paperboard, and I stuck those on either side, getting smaller toward the end of the tail. Also made some little claws. Now, I knew that I should have baked the claws first and then attached them into the monster and then baked that. However, that meant that I would need to heat the oven twice, and I did not want to do that. I went ahead and baked everything together, so the monster and the claws and the heels, and attached the claws. Should I have done it the other way? Yes, but it's okay. We got there in the end. I got the nails done. Feeling fresh. Time to paint. So I decided to paint it a sort of light purple color. I would explain to you why, but I really don't have any kind of explanation or thought process. <sighs> It's looking less spooky and more smoothie, but what can you do? Painted everything that color except for the one arm and the leg. And then I started layering in some shadows and building up dimension in any areas where shadows would naturally fall. Laid in some highlights later as well. Painted the extra limbs a light gray. Thought it would go well and provide a nice contrast with the purple. Then I started layering on shadows toward the ends of the limbs. So the hands and the feet and also near the sewn attachment points. Painted the claws black on the side with the gray and white on the purple side. I went in with a red color and started painting around the outer parts of the eyes. Please be honest with me here. Does it look like a Teletubby? I might need to paint my own nails too. I want a monster match my Monster Bash monster. Painted the biggest eye red. I really wanted all the eyes to be different colors. Shout out to all the beautiful people out there with heterochromia. Welcome to my tattoo shop. We may not have tattoo guns, but we do have hot glue guns. When I drew the card, I was thinking it would be open up to interpretation so people could do whatever tattoos they wanted, but those are actually the tattoos that I wanted to include. My whole thought process behind this is that they used the tattoos to sort of unify their body again and embrace the extra limbs as part of them. You give it eyes and suddenly it's cute. It can have a cute snake on its leg, that's fine. If I can ever sneak a moon into a project, I will. So I continued my tattoos from the leg card throughout the whole monster. It's tail sticking time. I glued the tail on with hot glue first and then went over that seam with liquid latex and the streamers to blend it into the monster. I know it probably looks not blended, but <laughs> to make the tattoos look more like they're actually under the skin, I wanted to do liquid latex on top of the entire thing and then did some additional painting over it. Tried to blend in the tattoos a little bit more and also just added some extra things to a couple of areas. Finished all of the last painting details. Now a really fun part that I was also super looking forward to was adding the stitches on the mouth, arm, and leg. Took thread and threaded it across in really small pieces. I also later painted the stitches on the mouth to make them a little bit more visible. Now one of the most important cards that I drew was actually the hand with the puppet finger on it. That really gave me the whole idea for this concept. It just looks like he put his finger in a cake. This is supposed to be scary. Help. I'm interpreting the card a little bit because I'm gonna make the puppet of the night. It's very subtle but it's there. <laughs> I also added glossy varnish on the eyes to finish up the monster. Then I went back to finishing the high heels. I added a tiny pointed stick and then painted the entire thing dark gray. I also used silver on the bottom. My whole color palette on the outside monster is very monochrome. Used some black thread as the shoelaces and just kind of laced them up the entire length of the boot, tying the top into a little bow. I also put tiny dots of puppy paint to add grommets, 
trimmed the top foil part of the heels, painted the sticks gray, weathered them a little bit. After those were all attached together, I glued that onto the base. Genuinely did not think that that was gonna stay up there. To see how well it would stand up or if it would just topple over, which was a real possibility, believe me. To keep the monster up there, my whole idea was essentially some fabric wrapped around them. So to make those, I used a really long strip of muslin. I don't know why, but I can't get banana phone out of my head right now. It grows in bunches. I got my hunches. Weathered it with some charcoal and some watercolor. Make it look really kind of gross. And I will attach that on a little bit later. I also decided to cover the base with some dirt to just give it a little bit of texture. It was pretty unnecessary, but please just ignore how much of a mess I have going on here. It's stressing me out too, believe me. The night piece for the outer monster needs to sit over that. So I took a couple of wood scraps and made sort of a secondary structure behind it. I really wanted the knight's eyes to glow red. I had some lights that I dissected from an old rave glove for a film a really long time ago. So I decided to use those. Since that's gonna sit on the back and I need to be able to access the switch, I needed to make a little box for the switch to sit in. So I just made that out of popsicle sticks and painted all of that black and attached it onto the back structure in an area that I could reach it well. Now finally working on the outer monster. So the basis for the outer monster was really this knight helmet card. I made the knight torso out of paper mache the same exact way that I just did with the sly van. I painted that black and then I started building the helmet pieces from paperboard. Essentially I just cut out the shapes, curved them, poked holes in the face shield part, painted all of those pieces silver, and then glued them together there's also a small middle strip that connects them where I can flip it up and down. Cut the paper mache part open under where the helmet will be. Painted and sealed the edges where I had cut. I'm putting diffusion paper inside, but parchment paper would also be a good option. Then we needed to lay on the chainmail texture. Took out some purple mesh ribbon that I had, painted it white, and then started layering it on top of that cut out the face area and glue those little pieces down. Then I put the helmet piece on and started weathering it a little bit. When that entire night piece was done, we attached it onto that secondary structure. Sometimes I look at this and I'm like, what am I even making? Party eyes. <laughs> Okay, that's actually kind of cool. The cloak was probably the hardest part of all of this. I went ahead and sized it the best that I could. Laid a strong wire on the inside of that, kind of like a curtain. Had this wonderful texture card from Zambies, and I decided to make that the pattern of the cloak. It sort of reminded me of like an oil slick or smoke. I of course wanted to keep with the monochrome color scheme, so I used different shades of silver and black. I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be able to save this and make it look good. We'll try our best. And uh, if not, Zambies, I'm so sorry. Time to start wrapping. I also added on some more stick pieces to kind of connect to the knight's torso. Does it actually make sense in how it's designed? No. And I will try to fix you. I don't know what I'm doing, help. After the fabric piece was done, I had to attach that to the back of the night torso. I'm concerned, but we just have to go for it because I don't have time to be worried about it. It's fine. I decided to hide that seam at the top. So I had this piece of black fake fur, cut a thin piece of that and laid that on. Along the stick pieces, I added some wires wrapping around, giving it that more robot-y sort of feel. Attaching the puppet strings, so the whole reason for this project, essentially. The puppet strings go from the inner monster to parts of the outside on the cloak and sort of draw your eye in. Sized it, measured it, and randomly glued it onto the back of the cloak. I used unraveled pieces of yarn for this, something flexible because it needs to be able to close and open. This hot glue piece had dripped out of my hot glue gun and I kept it because I thought it would be great for the cloak class. I continued buttons down the rest of the cloak and then painted them silver. All right, my friends, we're in the final stretch here. I added some bolts or like rivets where different pieces connect. And then I went and did my final weathering with the puppet strings and the wood beams and made everything look a little bit more cohesive. And then our monster was finished. So here is our night puppet master.
really enjoy working on this project because I don't get the chance to design my own stuff as often as I would like to. Since I wanted the costume to be a surprise, as much of a surprise as it can be while still being in the thumbnail, I'm gonna put the process for that on Patreon along with some of the behind the scenes. A big thank you to Trent from Miscast for inviting me to participate. It was super fun to work on something with everyone. Honestly, I'm a very quiet person, but everyone has been super, super lovely. So please, if you're interested, check out everybody's projects. If anyone wants to make their own monster from the deck that we created, I would absolutely love that. Tag me in it, tag it with Monster Bash. Happy Halloween to everyone. Don't be scared to show your inner monsters, <laughs> I guess.